This piece is not about myself, but about a shadowy person who once shared my husband's room. And many other things besides, as you shall see at the university. But let me make a proper beginning, like any self-respecting essayist. In every marriage, there are situations which lead to the dangerous pastime of exchanging amusing little confidences. For example, some Sunday afternoon when the dog has just been fat and my hair has just been washed, or some warm evening when there are a good two hours before it's time to dress for a party. Learning to talk intimately to each other is one of the more absorbing aspects of marriage. Of course, but one never knows when a confidence will become a confession or degenerate into a quarrel because married people must confide in each other and still live together afterwards. Only the extremely unwise will let all their hair down without taking certain precautions. My husband is a very careful and cautious man. He is also extremely modest. No matter how skillfully I have trained him with quaint little anecdotes about my school days, in the hope that he will respond with counterpart stories about his younger days. He remains non-committal. He is harder to catch than a smuggler. He sits there and nods and smiles, laughing and commenting every so often, playing the role of devoted listener. When I have ground up breath and in genuinity, I will say casually, Tell me about yourself before I knew it. Invariably, he looks down at his toes gallantly indicating that life before I came was a drab affair and nothing to talk about really. However, I am not to be put off so easily, especially since having been a journalist for many years. I have learned how to couch the most brazen question with brisk detachment. The most intriguing part of my husband's life, as far as I am concerned, are the several years he spent studying in America long before we met. It is to this obscure period that I always address my inquiries. I am as tactful as my eagerness will allow me. I begin by asking him innocently about, say, the seminar method in his college, the grading system, the length of the terms, the professors, the name if the courses also come under my scrutiny. Inevitably, I come to after hours. What did you do after classes? Oh, study. What a bore, I say. What did you do for fun? My husband is a KG customer. He has several stock answers ready. All museums, concert, and click clubs, and a few very few parties. It's more like it, but it takes several more questions before my husband introduces his roommate. You see, if I must believe him, my husband never took out any girls or had any flirtations or emotional complications or my fun at all. But his roommate did, and if I like, he can tell me about this interesting fellow instead. Alright, I sit since a roommate is better than nothing. And that is how I know so much about the subject of his piece. The man who used to room with the man who became my husband. This roommate seems to have been a charming young man, in addition to being incredibly like my husband. They were exactly the same age. They were taking the same courses. They had the same taste hypnotized and baked bits, and even look alike being dark haired and large. The roommate is called Bill, or Carlos, or Fritz, oh, he had a number of nicknames, is the airy explanation, and is sometimes Cuban of a Mexican, and that is what makes him remarkably a Filipino, you know, same culture and background. Well, at any rate, he was judging from my husband's stories, a devil with women. Dozens of girls in the nearby women's colleges were at one time or another in. Over with his melting black eyes, his dark hair, his Spanish accent, very similar to that of a Filipino who, like my husband, speaks Spanish. They wept over him and hung on his neck in spite of the fact that he was quite heartless can. He also had a rich aunt as my husband does who sent him 
a generous allowance, which allowed him to run up large liquor and haberdashery deals. He was always going off on fascinating weekends and house parties in glamorous New England towns, hunting and shooting and playing around with girls while my poor husband, of course, stayed home with his homework. The roommate kept getting into scrape, passing out in the snow after a particularly rowdy party, during which my husband, dateless and drinkless, of course, had kept counseling him to take it easy. Staying up all night cramming and most not meeting the final due to so much merrymaking with the girls, something my husband disapproved of. Getting invited to foreign embassies to try the Hungarian cooking of some diplomat's daughter or getting his eye blocked by an Italian waiter for singing the fastest song. Bill, Carlos, Fritz also had encounters with the local police for rowdy and drunken behavior, for putting political placards on the square, for playing practical jokes on his professor and friends. He was always having to change landladies, usually for littering the hallway with beer bottles. It is a wonder that my husband got along so well with this wild fellow. For my husband, as I know him at least, is rather stuffy and stiff. Indeed, I am amazed that he was so close to the man so unlike him in temperament or habits, to the extent of knowing his thoughts and even moving him from landlady to landlady. Once after a particularly delicious story about my roommate, I whimsically remarked what a great guy he must have been, so unconventional and so much fun. Perhaps I should have married him instead of an old stick in the mouth like you. And out of the corner of my eye, I saw my husband's face take an anguish, first split look as if he was trying to make up his mind about something. After a tense moment, he sighed and took up his new newspaper again saying, Perhaps you should have at all, but all young wild men have a knack of growing into solid and dull citizens like me. The trickiest part about the roommate is that he never writes to my husband now and neither does my husband write him. After such an intimate association over a period of so many years, they don't even exchange Christmas cards or other friends and classmates write, but never Bill or Carlos or Fritz. For some time now, I have suspected that the roommate is only a device of my husband's to allow him the luxury of confiding in me without the danger of committing himself to anything that might be used against him. Marriage is, after all, a court in which one often incriminate oneself. There is indeed a kind of understanding between us as to the real identity of this roommate. But as long as it remains unspoken and admitted, it is a harmless understanding. The only thing that gulls me about this alter ego is that I did not think of one for me first.